Hello everybody, I'm Ryan from Hellcat Design USA and uh, today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on Eevee uh, for Blender 2.8. Um, this is actually really not even about Eevee, this is more on the lines of how to build a lithophane and how to uh, build a lamp itself. Um, so <clears throat> here we go, what we're going to do is we're going to start out with the default scene. And I'm going to jump right into it and show you guys how to do this. Now, I don't have my key bindings up, and I'm sorry about that. Um, trying to figure out the best key binding program that kind of stays out of the way. I noticed a lot of the key binding programs are always in the way, and I'll even put it where my picture is here, even if I can find a good one. Um, but we're going to start out with the basic scene. So you're going to, uh, when you open it up, you're going to start out with a, um, your basic scene here. All right, now what we're going to do is, obviously, we're going to hit A, and we're going to get rid of everything. Okay, so we're going to hit A, and then X, and delete everything. Now we're going to hit Shift A, okay, and that's going to bring up your add. You can also come up here to add. That works too, but I use Shift A. Um, and it used to be where images from plane and all the previous blenders were in add for your mesh. It was down here somewhere. Uh, they moved it to here, which is, I don't really mind, they just moved it to a different spot. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to open up from your images to planes. You're going to open up what uh, image you're looking for. Okay, now, it, either if you've made an image or you have images or all that fun stuff. Uh, right now, I'm just going to be showing you how to do, how to build the lamp itself. I'm not going to be showing you how to build the pictures. Um, I can show you how to build the pictures later, but for now, this is uh, just how to build the lamp. Okay, well, I'm going to choose this image right here. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my shader settings so I can actually see what I'm doing here and see the picture that I have. Okay, now, if you're looking at this picture, it's actually a really cool one. Uh, there's dark edges, there's a bunch of really light stuff, dark stuff, you know what I mean? So, um, what we're going to want to do is, the reason I, I imported images plain is because it imports the image with the UV already unwrapped to this image. Okay, which means that the projection of what we're going to be doing for the displacement here in a minute will... Uh, it'll be able to project immediately off of it and we don't have to do any UV image editor work from here. Uh, so this is literally easiest way to do it for me. Um, first, what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode, okay, by hitting tab. Once you're in edit mode, you're going to want to create, um, you're going to want to hit, what is it, control R and hit um, your for your loop cuts, okay, and you're going to want to make as these blocks, depending on what your image size is, and usually I try to build them two to one. Uh, in other words, this right here, three blocks wide, and they're square. This is a little off, but that's okay. Um, but you're going to want these to be as square as possible. And the lamps that I do are two to one ratio, which means as wide as they are, or um, three times as wide, or three times the diameter of the, as wide as they are, is one times the height of them, which is basically, you know, that setup. So we want all of these to be square. After that, I'm going to hit A and select on every single one of them and hit Control E. That is going to bring up uh, this, oh, yeah, this is, that's going to bring up this menu right here, which is your edge menu. Uh, we are going to want to subdivide everything, okay? Once you hit subdivide, you'll get a little panel down in the bottom corner here. Um, my face is in the way, uh, but I will I'll uh, move out of the way real quick to show you uh, what we're going to want to do is all we're going to want to do is the number of cuts that are on this is just go to in between 50 and 100. Now, I suggest doing uh, the higher you do this number, the, the more vertices you're going to have in the end because we're also going to be adding in a subdivision surface modifier, which is going to add in more um, vertices to it. But for now, um, I, I, this image is going to be a very detailed one. So I'm going to want as many uh, vertices as possible. Now I know it doesn't look like there's that many vertices right now, but when we go into our, um, after this, we are going to exit out by hitting tab. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our modifier panel here and add in a subdivision surface. Okay. Uh, uh, subdivision surface. There we go. Uh, now, um, if you have a lower amount of vertices, you're going to want to click this up to three. 
Uh, if you have a higher amount of vertices, you can stick to two, or you can go to three. Either or, it's fine. It just remember, more subdivision surface, the more vertices you're adding, and the more processing you're going to have to do in a, a little bit whenever you add in the other stuff. So I'm going to stick with two for now, for both of those, for the render and for the quality. And then I'm going to add another modifier, and this one is going to be a displace modifier. Okay, this is actually what is going to tell the image to be up or down, okay, and to create the thickness of your actual lithopane lamp. Okay, so from here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into, um, first you want to go into your texture coordinates and go into UV, okay, and then we're going to click on UV map. That is going to tell it to go off the, the UV map that it's already unwrapped to and it's already done to, okay, and then we're going to click on new. Okay, once new is selected, you can click on the little button that's right next to it over here, and it'll bring up this. Now, instead of clicking on a new or open or anything, we're going to use the image that we already brought in. So it should already be in your images. Okay, you click on that, and you're going to get this. And if you're going to notice it, um, here's the best way to look. The, if you look at how this is, the lighter are sticking up, and the darker are down below. So all of the textures that are light are down here. All of the texture, or all the textures that are dark are down at the bottom. All the textures that are lighter on the top. We're gonna want to reverse that because what we're gonna want to do is we are going to want to um, what we're gonna sorry what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna actually want to have the light stuff be the thinner part of it, okay? And the dark stuff obviously to be the thicker part of it, so that it's uh, obviously as you can tell, you can look at it and be like, oh my god, it's you know. This is a dark area and this is a light area. Uh, if you have it reversed, it's kind of gonna gonna kind of look like a um, uh, what is that called? The, neg the negative images where it doesn't look right. It looks stuff doesn't look right. Uh, it's because the lighter areas are gonna be light and the dark areas are gonna be dark, and it's it's just it's gonna be reversed, and you don't want that. So we're gonna want to make sure that the thinner areas are the lighter areas and the thicker areas are the darker areas. So how to do this is we're gonna go back over to our modifier panel and then. Underneath here, underneath your displacement modifier where it says strength, we're going to turn that down to uh, a negative number. Now, the negative number is obviously going to take the light stuff and move it underneath. Okay, but we're going to go, let's say, negative 0.02. Okay. Um, now, I know it doesn't look too, like, ah, right now. Um, but here, let me go out of the shitty and go into the solid. You can see the what we're going for here uh, basically what you're gonna want to see is you're gonna want to you're gonna look and um, see the higher spots are going to be the darker areas and the lower spots are gonna be the lighter areas so if I go into my okay you can kind of see how his eyes are dark and his face is white so the eyes stick out and the, the face doesn't okay so <clears throat> once you have this image right here you're you're done. You're done. That's your little paint. That is literally your little your little paint. You just created one. Um, there's a few more steps to this, so it's the fun parts coming up here. Um, so once I do this, I always go into Object and um, Shade Smooth. Uh, the reason I do this is it literally when you go into the 3D printing settings, uh, it actually smooths it out and makes it a little more. Uh, a little better when it comes to um, the highs and lows and the differences okay it doesn't do much it just it shaves it out so that you don't have any sharp edges or things look more even basically okay um, like you can tell on his mask you see the points on his mask and his eyes his eyes are going to be dark and his, the points are going to be light okay see and the red is going to have its own color that's going to stick out a little higher and the darker basically the darker the color the different the, the is where the position is and like her she's going to be all up compared to everything else and her face is going to be light so you're just going to see um oh you're just going to see that right there and even for him like darks and lights whatever the dark and light it doesn't matter the color is it just matters where the shade is of that color is going to create that effect in the light. Okay, now you're not going to have color in the lithophane images, and that's perfectly fine, but you'll get the effect of a uh, black and white type of image, and that's it's really, really, really cool. 
So from here, now that you've shade smoothed it, uh, we're going to take this and we're going to we're going to hit R to rotate it on X axis. Oh, I'm on X axis, and then we're going to hit nine zero. Okay. Now that's going to just rotate it on the X axis ninety degrees. Okay. Um, from here, if you notice, I accidentally clicked my 3D cursor out there. So if I hit, sh what is it, Control C? Nope, Shift C. Sorry. Is it Control C? No. Shift. C oh, sorry, my bad. It is Shift C. I was hitting V by accident. Um, but once you hit Shift C, it'll center everything. Okay. And then you, from there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit Shift A. Okay. And we're gonna add a curve and a circle. Okay. Now, what we're going to want to do for this circle is we're going to add some more um, resolution to it. The, we're just going to make it smoother, so because the less resolution it has, the more square the actual rotation of the plane will be. So we're going to, I like to turn this up to like 56 or, you know, sometimes less than that, 36 to 56, somewhere in there. Um, it just, the, the higher it is, the smoother you're going to get um, for the actual circuit or a circle. Okay, and then once you have that, you're going to want to click on your plane and go back into modifiers. Okay, and I'm going to sh shrink these two, okay, for now. And I'm going to add a modifier, and this one is going to be a curve modifier. Okay, <clears throat> now for the curve modifier's object, we're going to get the Bezier circle we just created, and it's going to do that. It's going to suck that to the Bezier circle. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is look at it. Because when you add these, a lot of the time it will do what it just did. If you look, it reversed it. So now that the on the inside is where the thicker part is, and that's not what we want. So that's actually kind of easy to fix. All we're going to do is hit tab, oh, hit tab to go into edit mode, and then rotate by hitting R and then Z on the Z axis. Okay, and then 180 degrees. So that's going to turn that around 180 degrees. And then once we hit enter, we can get out of tab or out of edit mode. And if you notice, that fixed our little problem here. Okay, we can actually see the darker areas are sticking out, and the lighter areas are sticking on the inside. Now this is what I do to um, get this correct. What I'll do is I'll hit seven to go on the top view, and I'll literally just scale it until it hits the point that I want. Okay. All right. Now, uh, we're for the best way to do this is to go into your um, up and up here into your wireframe mode, so you can actually see where the edges are. And I'm gonna scale it down until they're not touching. Okay. And then now, sorry, my computer is going slow, but it will at this point in time. This is gonna actually be a point in time where it's gonna be a little bit difficult for uh, any computer really because this is you're adding in a lot of vertices and after we apply all of these it's going to be hard to go into edit mode it's going to be slow but that's okay we're going to I'm uh this will it, it'll be okay just you're going to have to wait a little bit it might crash it might not um I don't get a lot of crashing uh I usually don't get a lot of crashing it's just a lot of waiting for the program to uh do the algorithm for it so basically here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get them as close as possible, okay? Um, the reason why I want to get them as close as possible is because I'm going to bridge edge loops and that is going to create a um, distortion, okay? So I want them as close as possible, like that, okay? Now, <clears throat> there's two different ways you can do this. The way I like to do this and it makes it easier on me is to literally, with all of these not... Um, selected yet we're gonna go into edit mode on the plane oh sorry about that um, once we have this as close as possible what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our displacement or our curve modifier here and we're gonna apply the curve okay now what all it's gonna do is apply the curve it's not gonna touch the displacement or the anything else so anything we do from here we have to be careful because any any editing we do to the actual thing it, when these modifiers are up will distort stuff so what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply that okay and then we're going to go back into edit mode 
Okay. Now you're not going to have, because you haven't applied your displacement or your subdivision surface yet, you're not going to have um, your um, stuff, your uh, lithophane in the edit mode yet, because we haven't applied it. But what we are going to do is go to 7 and find that gap, which is right here, and double click A to deselect everything, and then select these two vertices when you're in wireframe mode. Okay, make sure you're in wireframe mode up here, and then select these two vertices. Now what that'll do is it'll click on all of these, all of the ones going up and down, and that's what we want. Okay, now from here, if you hit just F and you say, I want to face this, it's going to create a really bad jumbled area, and that's because it's UV unwrapped in different spots. And if you have one solid plane there, it's going to look really, really, really messed up. So you're not going to want to do that. What you're going to want to do in this situation is you're going to want to hit Control E. Uh, now that is going to bring up th this, uh, the edge, sorry, uh, the edge modifiers. And I'm going to, where is it? Oh, right at the top there. Um, like I said, they moved everything around in EV. I'm still trying to get my bearings with everything, but most of the stuff is generally the same. Um, we're going to want to bridge edge loops. Now, what that's going to do is instead of creating one solid face along that strip, it is going to box out each in, in each individual one so that it won't be as distorted. You're still going to have a little bit of distortion, but it's not going to be as distorted. Okay, now if I go out, uh, if I hit tab and go out now, what I'm going to have is this right here. They're going to be, it's actually going to be connected now, but you're always going to kind of get this little uh, edging there. Now, you can touch that off um, in the edit. You can go in the edit, and um, after you apply your subdivision surface and your displays, you can go in and delete those and then just create a, you know, connect, reconnect those uh, vertices, and you'll have a nice flat area. Um, I don't really mind it because even with the 3D printing, it's not that noticeable, especially on the back side of something. And a lot of the time, even if it's facing forward, it's not that bad. Uh, most of the, I have a couple lithophane lamps I can use as suggestions, but this is just the one I'm using. So now that we have this, we're going to want to look at it and make sure those are sticking out. And they have a nice, they stick out a bunch and you actually have some nice depth to it because that's what you want. You want a type of depth to it so that it actually uh, looks good. And you're also going to want to make sure that you don't have any spots that are going to stick out too, too far. I'm actually going to bring down my, dis uh, in my displace modifier, I'm actually going to turn this down just a touch more to 0 0.015. Okay. Oh. Sorry, that it's going to be negative 0.015. I want my tablet back on. Okay, hold on one sec. I'll go get your tablet, sweetie. Sorry about that, my daughter. <laughs> um, I'll turn your tablet on in a sweet second, sweetie, okay? Um, okay, so from here, uh, I 0 0.015, and we have... Is that still looking good? I like to go off of find one spot that's my favorite, something I know sticks out, like his eyes. Um, for So I know that sticks out, so we're good there. It has a, still has nice depth, and we don't have any super, super sticking out points. Uh, the reason why is because when you go to 3D print it, if, you have, if they stick out too vastly, you're going to have to create supports for that area, and any supports that you're going to have on the outside of any lithophane image is going to create lines. It's going to create an oddity. So we're going to want to try to avoid that as much as possible. No matter what, you're going to, from dark areas to light areas, there is going to be a jump, uh, especially like where his face is here. You see how there's it's going to go uh, out and then in real deep and then out again. Uh, that will be okay as long as it's centered, you know what I mean? As long as it doesn't stick out, out too far or in, in too far. And we already looked over this. This looks good. It doesn't stick out, out too far. It has a pretty good thickness to it of the uh, distance of the bubble itself. Okay. And we don't want anything more than that. Now these right here is what I was, I was talking about. You can actually see because it's part of the black image, it, uh, it variants, it doesn't have a UV setting, so these are kind of all over the UV map, so these are collecting all different colors, so it's going to be like that. 
Uh, you can go into edit mode from here, select those vertices, that just those vertices, and then move them into the darker area, and that'll smooth it out just a little bit. Like I said, I don't really worry about it because it also kind of creates like a seamed effect that I like, so I'm going to keep that for now. Um, all right, now from here, you're done with the lithophane part for that. From here, this is where it starts to get a little rough. All right, um, first, you're going to want to apply your subdivision surface. Oh, and when you're applying modifiers, most of the time you're going to want to apply them based off of the bottom one first, the one that's closest to there. That's They're, they're stacked on top of each other. If I would have added the, or applied the displace before I had applied the subdivision surface, it wouldn't, the displace wouldn't have calculated, calculated in the subdivision surface and you wouldn't have the subdivision surface as part of that and it would look really blocky, really big, really off, based off of the original vertices you had. So you're going to want to do your subdivision surface first and then you're going to, all, then you're going to want to apply your um, uh, displace modifier. And now that you have this, it looks pretty good. It does. But you don't have an actual thickness because there's no inside to this. Um, so, uh, now what I'm going to do uh, real quick is I'm going to show you this. Uh, it depends on um, how you want to do this. My favorite way to do this is now that all of this is applied and everything's good and all that, I'm going to delete the curve that's in here because we don't need that, this Bezier curve that's up in here. Okay, I'm just delete that, right click and delete it or do whatever. Okay, and then here's your lamp. Uh, you can go up into here and rename it. I'm just going to type in horror lamp, H-O-R. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a mesh and a cylinder. And I do not want any fill, so nothing for the fill. Okay, and I'm also going to want to turn the vertices on this up because obviously, as you can tell, it's if you look around the actual, the um, if you look around here, it's blocky, obviously, for the cylinder itself. So what you want to turn that up, um, I'll do 128, and that'll create a nice, a lot smoother of a surface. Maybe 156, actually, I'll probably just do 156 for that, and then that'll create a nice smooth surface, so we don't have to worry about that now. We're going to want to go into wireframe mode because we're going to want to look at this plane. And then if I'm in the texture mode, you can't see it. Even if I scale it, or even if I uh, scale it here, you can't see where it's at. So, But if we go into wireframe mode, you can tell where it's at. Okay. So once you're in wireframe mode, you're going to find one of your th thickest points. And you want to give yourself a nice little gap. Now this is going to be the area that's going to be your, the lightest point in the thing. So you're going to want to make sure this is nice and thin. Okay, uh, and because the displacement modifier only goes so far, because you only told it to go so far, you will only, the thickness will be the, the, the darkest points will always be the exact same. So, you know what I mean? Like, if I go here, scale it there, it's not going to touch anywhere around because that is as dark as it gets right at this point. And so, but if I go up, you know what I mean? If I'm right on the edge of it, and I go around and show you, you're not going to run into anything other than where you already did. But I'm going to scale that down a little bit. Okay. And all I'm doing is scaling it. Okay. Until I find a point that I like. Um, now, based off of how thick these are, that's about it. I mean, you really just need to have enough gap in between there where you have a layer or two of plastic. And then you want the thicker areas to have a, a, a little bit thicker. And as for the scaling of it, um, you can scale all of this stuff again when you're done. Uh, I'm just showing you the way I do it. Uh, if you can find a better way to do it, or if you can find any way else that would, you know, I'd be grateful to find easier ways to do this. Um, now, since this is all applied, now that you're in your uh, normal mode, you can actually see your stuff. Okay, you can actually see that it has the displacement added onto the actual mesh itself now, and it's permanent. All right, now from here, I'm going to want to scale this inside one on Z until I reach the top and the bottom here. Okay, and this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because we're going to be adding in a uh, rim to the top and bottom here. But G, oh, sorry, not G. I want to S on Z, and then I'll scale it up to right, right about the edge there. 
okay and then make sure the bottom's about the same make sure they're not too far off yeah that's that looks good um and <clears throat> now that everything's applied what we're going to do is and we have the inside selected um you're going to want to select the outside okay so you have both selected and then you're going to hit control j that is going to join these two meshes together now here comes the fun part that might slow your computer down a little bit what we're going to have to do actually is go into edit mode now i'm going to let you know since you have that subdivision surface applied you are going to have a lot of vertices okay um you are going to have let's go into solid mode here and you are going to have a lot of vertices okay um so you're going to want to take it easy on this so what we're going to do is you're going to click on this edge and this edge oh not that edge this edge and then we're going to go into z to see if i clicked on anything else see yeah, i see i clicked on that i don't want that okay now i'm going to click on seven go to the top view and i'm not going to do this to all because if i do this to all and it's a circle it will um uh create a uh um a cap on top of it uh we don't want to do that so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to hit uh shift uh well hit b and then create a box and then hit hold shift and then just deselect half of them okay and then from there we can hit control e bridge edge loops okay now if i go into solid they should be good okay yep they're good Okay, now I'm going to want to click on these, or uh, hold, sorry, hold shift and click on the edge here. Okay, and that will, or sorry, not shift, but alt, and that will um, grab all of the ones in this circle. Okay, and then I'm, wanna, I'm going to want to hold shift and select these two on either side. Because when you go to uh, bridge loops, it won't do it if it's one solid structure. Okay. So the best way to do it is to deselect those two end ones, okay? And then what we're going to want to do is do Control E bridge edge loops, okay? Uh, we're going to do the same thing for the bottom, um, and then we're going to hold Alt and grab that um, to make sure we grab all those vertices, and then just hit F to face those. And then the same thing over here. We're going to have a gap over here, so we're going to hit. Um, alt and then click on the edge until you get the open vertices and then hit F okay and we're gonna do the same exact thing for the bottom here uh, we're gonna hit uh, alt or yeah alt and that will grab those and then we're gonna want to grab the bottom one out of here let's see get in close uh, and how I'm doing that uh, zooming in and out like this instead of using my wheel uh, is if you hold control and then click on your mouse wheel and drag your mouse wheel in and out. It'll actually do that manually for you, which is a little bit easier. Um, but now that I have that, I want to control, um, let's see, control shift and click on that. So you'll grab that too. Uh, sorry about that if I didn't say that before. It's control shift when you want to grab both of them. Um, Shift is grabbing more than one. If you hold shift and then just start clicking around, you'll grab multiple vertices. If you just click around, you'll select individual vertices. So anytime you're doing anything, anytime you hold shift, you're going to grab multiple vertices depending on what you're doing. And alt is going to grab the entire loop around that edge that you're doing. Okay, now we're going to do, like I said, we're going to do the same thing there. I'm going to hit control seven, and that's going to bring me to the bottom view here. And then I'm going to hit B. And then I'm going to hit shift, and that's going to get rid of the top ones. And then I'm going to do what I did before by hitting control E, bridge edge loops. Okay, and now it's easy because if I just do this, it'll bring out all of those. And the same thing as before, I'll get rid of this one. I'll get rid of this one. Same thing on the other side. I will get rid of this end one, and I will get rid of this one. And then control E, bridge edge loops. Okay, and then we will click on that with uh, Alt, hit F. Same thing over here. We're going to hit Alt and F. Okay, and guess what? Now we have our basic lamp. 
Um, this is actually literally our lamp uh, and how it is going to be printed. Uh, the only difference that we're going to have here is we are going to add in a rim on the top and bottom of it. Uh, now, and this is also going to be the structure for the lamp. Now, um, okay, so I forgot the actual dimensions, so I guess I'll show you how to do this too. Uh, I forgot the dimensions for the uh, lampshades, the average lampshades in the United States, and there is an average to it, so uh, generally this will fit around. Uh, you take the bulb out, you slide this over the fixture, and it'll um, do that. So what I'm going to do is grab a pen here real quick, make sure I have a pen that works. Okay, and then I'm going to go to... Uh, um, let's see, I'll go to any one of these, and I'll bring this over here so you can see. And we're going to go to um, A-B-E-R-H-E-E, -E, lamp size. Okay, uh, and lamp ball. Let's see, what average lamp bulb maybe? No, we don't want the bulb size. We want the lamp. Uh, what is the average size of a lamp? What is that called? The lamp inlet, maybe? Hmm. Um, or there's another way I could do this, actually. I have a lamp right here. Okay, and this is the average size or an average lamp. It's just a tiny little lamp with a thing. So I'm going to measure this part right here um, around where the bulb goes in because this is where the um, lamp is going to sit. So I'm going to measure the distance between here and here. Okay, And that is going to be our our diameter for our um, uh, the diameter for our uh, lampshade here or our, the diameter for the base connection. Okay, And it looks like it is one and a quarter inch, okay? Uh, since I live in the US, everything is imperial, but I have to convert it to metric. So, oh, what did I say? One and a half inch or one and a quarter? I don't even remember, hold on. So it would be one and a quarter. Okay, one and a quarter inch. So now I'm gonna go to millimeter to inch, millimeter to inch. Okay, and for our inches, it is gonna be one, and one quarter, okay, which is 31.75. Okay, now that I have 31.75, that is gonna be the diameter of the holder hole, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, Eevee does not have um, the layer set up. They actually have collections now. Um, I'm not gonna show you the collection stuff, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hide stuff. So we'll come back to it. We'll bring, I'll, I'll show you how to bring that back up. You just come over here and hit the little I and it'll make it disappear for a little bit. Um, and then we're going to add in a... Uh, I'm going to add in a circle uh, and just extrude it from there. But what we're going to want to do, let's see, turn this up to 96. Oh, no, you know what? 128 for that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to... Um, our size here by clicking N. And if you see how it says two meters by two meters by two meters, I think we're still in metric. Okay, we're in metric. We're going to want to click none. Now this is, I know, I know it's kind of confusing, but Blender's units, each unit is um, a millimeter. Okay, so each square in the general block is one millimeter long. When you create something, it is actually two millimeters by two millimeters. Okay, um, so when I type that in, uh, now that I have my dimensions at 2 and 2, if I type it and bring up my 31.75, that is actually going to be the correct millimeters. So right now it's 2 millimeters by 2 millimeters, but I want it to be 31.75, and hit tab, and 31.75, okay? And that is actually going to create the correct size for the circle. Okay, 
So now what we're going to want to do, that means that that is the same size as our lampshade. Um, like I said, it, depending on where you're at, general lampshade sizes are all the same. Uh, you're not going to have to worry. When you do one of them, it'll fit on generally most lampshades, but I would suggest going and get, going to um, a local store, any lamp store that'll have lamps or anything like that, and just picking up a small one. Walmarts have them. T tons of different stores have them. So uh, just go get yourself a small lamp and just measure the outlet to it. Usually it's about one and a quarter around there. Uh, and this will this will fit on most lamps too, because most lampshade outlets are the same exact size. You're not going to really you vary too too much. Now, because I want it to fit on top of it, I actually don't want it to be exactly 31.75, because when you go to 3D print, everything shrinks just a touch. So I'm actually going to scale this to 31.82. So it's going to be 31.8 and 31.8 instead of 75. And I know that's not much, but that's going to be just enough where it'll slide over and be tight on it because we want it to be tight. Okay. Now we're going to go to now we're going to go to edit mode on this. Okay, and we're going to click E. Okay, and then that's going to do this to it. That's going to extrude it, and then we're going to scale. Okay, and we're going to want to scale this, let's say, to, no, let's say 1.25. Yeah, something like that. That's good, because that'll create a nice thickness. you got to remember, this is the size of a light bulb, and you don't, you know what I mean? So this is, this is what we're doing. Uh, we can double-click A, or click A, and that'll grab everything, and then hit E again, and we're going to E on Z by 2. Okay, why did that not work? So E on Z by 2. Oh, that is 2. No, I don't want that. Let's say 4. Uh, let's make it a little thicker. Do 6. That, that looks good. Because we want, what we want, uh, the, added, the effect that we want here is essentially we want the... Um, essentially what we want is this is going to hold the lampshade up. So this this should be a little thick, you know what I mean? Um, so once you oh, once you have that, we're gonna hit E Z six and then enter. Sorry, I didn't hit enter, and then I just exited. Okay, and then we have this. What I'm gonna want to do is I'm gonna want to grab all of this and then hit Shift D, which will duplicate that. Okay, and then um, right click so it goes back into place, and I'm gonna hit Scale, and I'm gonna hit Shift Z. Okay, so that'll scale it, but it won't scale it on the Z. Okay, and I'm going to bring it up to... Um, actually, before I do that, what I'm going to do is, since this is going to stay the same, we're going to bring in our lampshade again here, which is going to be look really small, probably. Ah, oh, it's so small. Okay, so this is going to want to scale. Now, depending on the size of your printer, this is what you're going to want to do. Okay, I look at the dimensions themselves. Okay, current 12, 15, 12. Okay, uh, so if I scale this, okay, and let's say I get up to, oh, look at that, 260, 213 by 213 by two, or 213 by 213 by 260. Now, my, my printer will print the circumference. Okay, my printer goes up to 220. Okay, so my X and my Y, okay, should be 220. Um, 213, 213. Oh, wow. So the X and the... Oh, sorry, my bad. I forgot to do this before. Uh, you can click on that and then hit Control S. Oh, sorry. Not, uh, you can hit Control S to save it if you want to, but we're not doing that. Um, Control A. And we're going to um, rotation and scale. And then, yeah, that should be good. Okay, yeah, now it's correct. Now you're going to see 213, 213, and 263. Now my printer is 220 by 220. Okay, uh, so it'll, it'll print my, this diameter, but it won't print. It goes up to 250, okay, which means that 260 is too high. So I'm going to want to scale this so it fits inside of my printer and it's the right size that I want. And I want it to be probably to, let's bring that down to Z to 200. Yeah, about, about 200. Yeah, okay. Now, 
it is that is going to make a decent size lamp. Okay. Now I know it's 160, um, but that is going to make a decent size lamp. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to click one, and then we're going to go to wireframe, and we're going to grab our lamp and put it at the floor. Okay. And we're going to do this to um, so that it's level uh with our input okay so i'm gonna grab it by z do that put it right on that line okay and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but as close as possible okay um and then once you did that okay we're gonna want to grab oh i went into edit mode we're gonna want to grab this our cylinder again here and go into edit mode and then hit seven and then we're gonna hit s and shift z and that's gonna scale it up more and then we're going to want it to stick out a little bit on either side. So we're going to do it there. Okay, so it's, see, we got a nice little, I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Scale, Shift, Z. Uh, okay, about there. Okay. And then we're going to double click A. And then grab all the vertices around here. Now, I could just hit Alt and do it, but that's only going to grab one of the vertices. And remember, this is, all, there's we're actually grabbing, um, two separate vertices, okay, sets of vertices. And we're gonna wanna do the same thing, scale, shift, Z, and we're gonna wanna bring it in just a little bit, just a little bit smaller, you know what I mean? Just create a little bit extra um, rim on that. And the reason we're doing this rim right here uh, is actually, I'm actually gonna take this, look at it, and we're gonna go like this, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit because GZ, oh, GZ, okay, and we're going to want to bring it up so it's sitting in it, okay, because we're going to, we're going to uh, apply these two together, okay, so these two are going to be added together, all right, um, and then there you go, you have the basic um, base of the lamp, now I'm going to go back into the circle, go into edit mode, double click A, and then grab, by hitting L, I'm going to grab this whole entire outside object, and I'm going to hit Shift D, and I'm going to go back to one, and then hit one to go into front view, and then I'm going to hit G to grab it, and then Z on the Z axis, okay, and then we're going to put it there. All right, now um, uh, we're going to want to remember uh, just a little bit high, just a little bit above, so it fits in, about in the middle is fine on the top. Uh, wherever you put this is just make sure you're not overlapping with the image itself. You know what I mean? Um, okay. And then what we're going to want to do is this is, <clears throat> this is an all up to you situation. Uh, the way I like to do this is I like to do, um, uh, five or six arms attaching from the inside to the outside. Um, the reason I like to do that is, how do I put this? Um, I like I like it to be sturdy, uh, and um, that means when it prints and stuff like that, you, you want it to make sure everything is nice and. Uh, d when you take it off of the printer and you go to put it on the lamp, you want to make sure that the arms don't break off. And when you have a smaller lamp like this, a lot of the time the arms will break off if you have three or four, you know, uh, arms going out. So what I'll do from here, there's, um, what I'll do from here usually is I'll go into edit mode again. And since I know these are the same size, I can actually click on, let's see, uh, I'll come up here and go into my face mode up at the top here. And then I will click these two okay by the y-axis and then come up to where the y-axis is over here okay and click that one and that one and then I'll click I'll click four or five because I want it to be about the same you know what I mean I want it to be about the same width so four should be good Let's see I only grabbed that one so that should be good now if I hit control E and then bridge edge loops, you will get that. Okay, that's because the tops are connecting to that. Da -da 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 -da. It has more vertices than it needs to for that. Um, so we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to go. What is it? I'm trying to remember how I did this before. Oh, 
Yeah, I remember now. You hit X and faces. Delete the faces. Okay. Now what we can do is go and do basically the same thing. We're going to click on these with Alt. And then holding Shift and Alt, we're going to do the same thing for this circle. Shift and Alt. Okay. And then Control E, bridge edge loops. Oh, we still have that. Okay. So basically this is going to work like this. Um, we are, since we're having that issue, uh, there's a couple different ways we can do this. I'm going to hit uh, Control Z a few times until I get those back. Uh, I'm going to do this the other way. Um, which is, I'll go into here and I will select the vertices that I want from here, uh, and I'll create a bar that goes across. Um, there's another way to do it, and I'm actually going to show you that way right now, because to me it's easier to do it that way anyway. Um, add a cube, okay, and we're going to go to edit mode and GZ, and then hold... Uh, if you hold, what is it, control, you're going to snap it to the next vertice, which is going to create it nice and flat, which is level with everything else right here. So if I go like there, you can tell it's level. Um, so that'll snap it to the cursor, so that's like that. And then I'll hit Z again, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Z here, and I'm going to go to 6, because these are 6, 6 wide. And the base I'm going to do is, say, 4 by 4. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to edit mode, grab that on the, actually, no, we're going to keep it right there. I'm going to hit Shift D and then Y and bring it to right there. And then double click A and then L on the center one, Shift D, Y, and we're going to put it right there. And then same thing, double click A, L, Shift D, X. And put it right there, and then double click A. Oh, double click A, L, and then we're going to. We're not going to duplicate this last one. I'm just going to grab it and put it over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of them. Okay, Shift D. Okay, and we're going to rotate on Z. Okay, and then say four five. Okay, that'll put them right between there. Now this will create. Um, a uh, kind of a wire mesh on the bottom of it and it'll create a nice effect coming out of the lamp on the bottom. Um, <clears throat> like I said, you can do it, uh, I would suggest doing it above five. Uh, the reason why I say five is because <clears throat> five is um, five is uh, it's a lot more supportive and you won't have as many breaks. Uh, I noticed a lot of people complained about when they originally did, uh, when I originally sent lamps out, I had four on there, and they, the arms kept breaking. And I noticed when I used five, it all of a sudden that stopped. It didn't have breaking anymore. So after that, uh, we add those in. We're going to go into wireframe mode here. Uh, we're also going to select on our face mode, and then go into wireframe. And we're going to grab all of these outside faces here. Okay. Um, now we could. Actually, yeah, let's do this. Uh, we're going to just grab that by Y, bring it up here. Okay, same thing with this. Grab this G and Y, bring it down here. Okay, uh, and then G on X, bring that over here. G on, G on X, bring that over here. Now you can also make these wider and bigger and all that other stuff. Um, I personally prefer to have uh, four or six uh, millimeters for this for the size of it <clears throat> um, now but for these corner ones you want to put G and then if you hold um, if you hold control it'll snap it and you already know that you're on the 45 degrees of that so it's gonna keep coming along here and you're gonna keep going along until you hit like there and then you're even on that so if you notice I'm on that line, I'm right on that line, and that's going to be perfectly fine. And we're going to do the same thing, G, and hold control, and make sure it's centered, round centered, okay? And round centered with these um, vertices here, and then we're just going to snap it 
inside of there. Okay, uh, same thing with these, G, and then hold control. And if you're zoomed out, it'll actually go further, which I probably should have done in the first place. And then G, or uh, select it, and then hit G. And about right there. I'll bring this up a little bit, though, because I want to make sure that it's nice and in there. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to click on this, my circle here. I'm going to, I'm going to actually, um, for this cube here, I'm actually going to um, hide it. You'll see it here in a second. I'm hiding it for a reason now. Uh, click on your circle, and then if you go into your modifiers and then add in a modifier, a Boolean, and then intersect union, okay, and then click our cube, okay, you'll see it'll kind of try to create that cube. Now, you're going to want to mess around with some of the settings and try to get it to all fit, and you know what I mean, because um, this is where it kind of gets a little tricky. Uh, if doing it this way, honestly, uh, there's you can also do this. Um, what I'll like to do is I'll <laughs> hold on one sec. Hold on, Annabelle. I'll be right there. What I'll do is I'll grab my cube and I'll I'll bring it back and then I'll grab it and then I'll look at this view, okay? And I'll go to wireframe and I'll G and I'll move it around just a little, okay? Now. You can also do the same thing with the lamp. It's easier with the lamp because then you can see all the vertices that are coming in because of it. Um, but a lot of the time, all you really have to do is scale on Z just a tiny bit. And then we're going to hide those cubes again. And then bring that down. Okay. And then we're going to go back to our cube here, bring it back, and we're going to scale it just a little bit more on Z. And go back in. Here, let's hide our hollow lamp here. And then hide our cube. Okay, so that seems to be having some issues over here. Okay, so I'll try to figure out what's going on. Um with our cube lit up. Okay, um, let's see, here we go ahead and mix it up. Do that, oh, I got rid of, I wanted to get rid of the cubes. All right, now we're gonna hit GZ and we're gonna move it around until all of them are there. Okay, and that's, as get as close as you can to about even. Okay, now like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect um, because we just want it as close to Z as possible. Okay, um, so wireframe, and we're gonna G. Oh, I just hit H. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, solid. You see this? Go to one. And then go to wireframe again, sorry about that. And then what we're gonna wanna do is G, not H, and Z. Bring that up until you get that right about level. And then we're gonna come up and check to see if they're all still there. Solid, they're all still there. And we still have our cube unlit, so we're good. That should be perfect, okay? And we're gonna apply that Boolean, okay? That should have created this right here. This is the effect that you want. You can make them a little thicker. You can make them however you want to make them. It's, this is this is just how I like to personally do it. Now, um, one of the things I did notice is that even when you uh, shrink this, there's always a slight chance that it might um, not slide on correctly. So what I'll do is I'll actually go into go up to here to vertices and I'll click on the bottom rung wherever the bottom of it is, and I'll actually scale it just slightly bigger. Okay, uh, and I probably should grab both of those. Go to wireframe, grab both of those, okay, and then scale, shift Z. Ooh, I have, I have a bunch of vertices here. Uh, hold on one sec, let me double click A, 
and then I'll hit my space bar. Like I said, I shifted my space bar in EV over to the um, uh, search panel because it just it, it's what I'm used to. Um, and I'm gonna go to remove doubles. Okay, remove doubles. Fifteen hundred doubles were removed. Okay, now if I go back into edit mode here and I grab this, and I should be able, oh sorry, should be able to grab all the ones around. Make sure they're all selected. Scale it just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, so it has kind of a kind of a uh, comb to it, just a little bit, and that well, that'll just make it so it fits on, and then you can push it to slide it with the top part of it. It just it just makes it a little easier. That's that's what I like to do. All right, now that we have our cube done, okay, um, there's no modifiers. We can or our uh, cylinder done. We can actually get rid of the cube here that we created. So get rid of those. Okay, and then what we're going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of the circle up here and I'm going to add in the lamp again. Click on the lamp in the modifiers and I'm going to add in a boolean again with the union and then we're going to pick our cube. Now that should actually have attached your cube to it and added it to the actual cube. Okay, <clears throat> now if you hit apply and go into your circle and select that and then click on that and delete that, you have your lamp done. There's your lamp, 100% done. Now from here, um, uh, I don't know, uh, Eevee has this set up a little bit differently with the panels and where they are and stuff like that for, uh, for the 3D printing that used to be in the tool panel that was over here is now on the other side, but you still have to go into uh, edit, preferences, and then go to, um, uh, where is it, add-ons, and then in the search for the add-ons just type in, uh, what is it, 3D, I think it's just 3D print, yeah, 3D print toolbox right here. Uh, just make sure that's selected, okay, and then once that's selected, save your preferences, and then exit. And then you'll have your 3D printing toolbox bar right here. You can click on it, and it'll bring up your uh, 3D printing stuff. Okay, uh, down here, don't worry about Blender's uh, checks. Blender's checks always throw off so much stuff, and there's no need for it. There's no want for it. None of that. You know what I'm saying? So the way I, I don't worry about this because I only worry about. Uh, my slicing program itself what my slicing program is doing so what I'm gonna do is I'm just all I'm gonna do is change the path of where this is going I have um, a lamp the where I want it to go already selected so I'll accept that okay and then uh, you can export it as an OBJ an STL a PLY da -da -da -da, depending on what your printer takes 99% uh, of printers use STLs they're, they're the best they really are um, I get less issues with the STLs than I do with the OBJs. Um, OBJs generally tend to leave um, areas cut and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know why it does it, but that's kind of how it works. But I don't worry about any of your checks here. I literally just place it where I want it, make sure it's on STL, and then I hit export. Okay. And then you will get at the bottom here exported. Okay. And now that that's exported, we can go to our uh, whatever slicer you're using. Uh, whatever slicer you're using is perfectly fine. Um, uh, I like Idea Maker because I'm able to add in my own stuff. Uh, so we will go back to 3D print, 3D printing models for sale, and then go down to the lamp, and then go down to here's the lamp itself. Okay. And we can open that. Okay, and we're going to have a couple seconds of loading, and then we're going to get this. Okay, now, depending, it's going to say there's you have issues. Um, you can repair it. Uh, a lot of the time, the idea maker, though, uh, it automatically fixes it on its own when you go to slice it. Uh, but, it, yeah, see, even here, it didn't even do anything for it. Um, 
So what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to double check by what I'll do is uh, I, I have different settings here that I'll use for it. Um, now, don't you want to make sure when you're doing this that, uh, hold on, let me start it, let me just start like this one, we'll do 100%, three shells, uh, skirts, I'll go to advanced, and then I'll just make sure that my infill, or not my infill, my support is on none, because I don't want this to create any support. Okay. Save and close, and we're going to slice. Okay, we're going to give it a couple seconds to slice here, and while it's slicing, uh, the reason I'm doing this and the reason I'm showing you this is because this is uh, this is actually where you're going to bounce back and forth and change your variance of how thick you want things, uh, how thick you want that inside wall and that outside wall. Oh, sorry. Um, all right, we're almost done here. Um, slicing is saving. It'll take a second or two to do. Um, but you have... This is this is literally it. It's not that hard to do. There are a few steps to it. I know I took my time and I tried to explain what I could. If anybody has any questions, leave a comment. Um, if there is anything you would like to know, uh, just ask. I don't have any issues answered. Um, anything like that. Um, uh, most slicer programs, uh, like Cura and all that other stuff. Great programs. Uh, I use Idea Maker just because I like the individual add-on for the supports. I can add and take away supports and do other stuff with other programs. You can use whatever slicer program you want. It's not a big deal. Um, with Idea Maker, um, even though I, some of the faces may not be facing the correct way, and Idea Maker will actually recalculate and do that for you so you don't have issues. Um, Oh, we're done here. Um, so that's the reason I, I, I prefer Idea Maker. All right, so we're going to look at our model here in the preview mode uh, just to get a general idea and a check of how it is, what it is, and see if we like it, see if this is what we want, you know, this is what we want to print. So we can actually take it into the program here and give it a quick look. Looks pretty good. Looks like we have everything. There's no... Um, there's no uh, messed up faces, da 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 da. What we're, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down, okay? I'm gonna look at the thickness, okay? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go in and I'll find a thin spot, okay? The super thin spots. I'm not worried about the thick spots. The thick spots are always gonna be fine. It's the thin spots that we're gonna worry about. Uh, and luckily on this, it looks like I get, this is a pretty thin spot right here. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna scroll through my layers and see if there's anything that gets too, too thin. It looks like it's about two layer or two um, bands thick, and that's okay to have a small gap in between there. And a lot of people look at that small gap and they're like, ah. But um, believe it or not, when the printer does go the and with the expansion and the contraction of the plastic itself, by the time it gets to the next layer, it actually does come in most of the time, not, unless that gap is big. Okay, and I mean really noticeably big. If I zoom out out here, it's it's not that noticeable, you know what I mean? It's not a big noticeable gap. Um, uh, I'm using a normal FDM printer. I'm gonna be printing um, this right here. Uh, I do wanna let you know, these are gonna take a while to print, okay? So if I do this and look at the full thing and then I X out of this, uh, this says it's gonna take 63 hours. Now, most of the time that time is off a little bit. Uh, usually I'm at about 48 to 50. Um, but I, honestly, the, the more detail it is, usually the it has to move around more, it has more to fill in, it has more to do. Uh, so usually the higher the design, the, or the higher the um, detail, the longer it's gonna take for your 3D printer to do. Uh, these lamps are absolutely amazing. Um, I have a couple of them actually, and I have printed them on my uh, Facebook page for Hellcat Design USA. Um, you can go and check it out there. Uh, I have several, honestly, I have several different types of lamps that I can do. I do, you know, the design stuff takes me a, just a little bit of time. If I didn't have to sit and explain stuff to you and I just ran right through it, this would honestly take me, um, uh, like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, but 
Yeah, it's all it's all on you uh, and how you guys want to do it. Um, I guess I see that I'm in an hour and four minutes. This took way longer than I wanted it to. But hey, sometimes that happens. Um, so from here, all you're going to do is export it and then start 3D printing. And like I said, this takes um, um, this right here. It'll turn out great. Like I said, and you just take a look at it, and you can generally get an idea of it and stuff like that. And they they look great. So uh, that's basically it. I will do another tutorial showing you how to make pictures that will go on here and make your own designs and uh, all that other stuff. I just took a picture that I found offline because I uh, somebody wanted me to make a lamp with this, so I'm doing that. And I wanted to show you guys how to do it because everybody seems to be going to those websites doing it, and that was. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they don't ever seem that good, and there's not that much editing detail you can do to it and all that other stuff. Uh, the reason I do it this way is because this gives me more individual rights to tell how thick I want it, how thin I want it, if I want it, you know what I mean? Do I, and it also depends on the pictures themselves. But in all honesty, this is the coolest way that i found to do it because this creates more individual um, steps to figure it out, I guess. So, but this is how I do it. Um, like I said, this normally takes me, once I've done it a few times, it's, I can get this down to 15, 20 minutes, maybe even less, depending on uh, how my computer's running and stuff. But um, yeah, that's it. That's literally it. I will, uh, next tutorial I'll do, I'll try to do one on how to create the actual images themselves for the lamp. Uh, I'm not going to create this image. But I'll create a similar image, and you can get the general context of how it works, and you know, you, you get what I mean. Um, so for now, this is going to be it. Uh, thank you. Um, come if you like the video, like it. If you sh share it as much as possible, um, any contributions and stuff like that. I'm going to be doing all of my tutorials for free. I don't have a Patreon yet. I'm going to be working on getting a Patreon here soon, and um, you can also visit my. Um, Facebook page at Hellcat Design USA. Uh, I'm sure you can find it. It's in um, Ohio. Uh, HG USA is um, how it is. Uh, let me think. What else? What else? Um, if you have any questions or comments, I have no problem. If you have any discrepancies, let me know. If there's anything in this that I did that I did something wrong or anything like that, make sure to let me know because I am definitely the type of person that loves to hear that and I will be doing updates on the videos and stuff like that so they're refreshed whenever new new uh, updates come out and stuff becomes easier and all that other stuff. But this is generally how to do it based off of um, taking an image, putting a displace modifier on, you know what I mean, and putting it around a circle and then creating all that extra stuff. So I just wanted to thank you guys for being here. Um, you guys uh, have yourselves a good day. Um, if you want to, uh, like I said, leave comments, I would definitely love any input of how you guys feel. If there's anything else you guys would want, you're more than welcome to let me know. So um, uh, thank you guys. Have a good day.